Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Beauty Pop Podcast. I'm Victoria. And, and I'm Jen. And she's oh, Jen. <laughs> We're we sp- ready to go. Super caffeinated totally. today. Let's hit you it. are. You're on it. Um, so this week we're going to talk about some lip balms, which mm-hmm. I think a lot of people associate, or I used to at least, I used to associate dry lips with just winter skin. But yes. now I'm finding that like I need a lip balm all year. I need a mm-hmm. good lip balm like all year long. So you've got some great recommendations and I have my one that I constantly go back to. So we're going to talk about <laughs> that. Um, and then you also saw, I know this sounds like Jen saw a movie. I know, but it's a big deal. <laughs> but it is actually. a big deal. <laughs> and you saw it like in the theater, right? Like in the theater with popcorn, the whole nine yards. Yeah, it was, um, I saw About My Father, which was excellent. I, I have can't not wait to heard tell you of this all movie. about it. I had neither, but I, well, do you want to start there yeah, and then yeah, we'll yeah, get into not? our lip balm? We have no rules. All right. uh, we have no rules here. Okay, so this is so funny. The reason I have to tell you this is because it's a full-on idiot move. So I was going to the movie Memorial. This is Memorial Day weekend, so a couple of weekends ago, and decided that we wanted to go see Guardians of the Galaxy. So oh, I okay. bought my tickets for Guardians of the Galaxy, and our group showed up, and we stood in line, and we got our popcorn, and we got our drinks, and we were going in. And when I showed the ticket to uh, the guy at the front, he goes, ma'am, your tickets are for tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> I have never done that before. But, um, yeah, bad move. Bad move. And I'm not a rookie, but it was a bad, bad move. And so I said, well, can we transfer these tickets to today's show? And he goes, well, normally you could, but Guardians of the Galaxy is sold out. So Yeah, those are popular went, movies. It must be like the third or fourth one by popular. now, right? It's the third one, yeah. yes. And I like those movies. I think they're always fun. And so I was just going to get my money back. And then I see this, fi- I see this show about my father. And it was playing 10 minutes after the Guardians show was going to start. So it's like perfect timing. And I quickly watched the trailer on my phone. I thought, okay, this looks pretty funny. Victoria, it was so good. I have not seen a comedy that made me laugh like it did, but it was also so sweet. Um, It wasn't crazy. It wasn't a crazy storyline. It wasn't deep and dark and like draw. It was... It was just a sweet, good, old-fashioned comedy. And, and who is in this? I, I can't believe I haven't heard of it. So Robert De Niro is the father. Okay. And the main the main star, the guy who wrote the film as well, is a comedian that had totally skipped over my radar, but he is huge on Instagram. He has comedy specials on whatever, HBO, Netflix, like the whole nine yards. His name is Sebastian Maniscalco. Oh, he's huge. We and love him. I don't you know, know him. Oh, see, we've we watched we've seen all of his all of his specials. My husband Louis, who's also Italian, relates to all of Sebastian's like Italian family stuff. Yep. And like, there's a hilarious bit about like if you go how you know if you go to an Italian wedding and you know you don't bring a gift, you can't bring a gift. You have to just bring cash. Yeah. And that the bride and groom <laughs> immediately open all the money, and then they have like a ledger of what they've given to other people <laughs> and like what they. I mean, it's like it, the whole bit is just hilarious. And I looked at Lewis. I'm like, is this real? He goes, Oh, a hundred percent. This is how Italians <laughs> do weddings. So Sebastian's hilarious. He has a new special that we just watched. I forget the name of it, but it's uh, it's on Netflix. And mm-hmm. I think you would really like him. He is he's kind of a physical comic. Like he makes lots of like that's what I like about him. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's he's really good. He's I mean, he's huge. I didn't even realize how big he was until Lewis introduced me to him. And then I was like, oh, well, he sold out Madison Square Garden like four nights in a row or something. That's why I was stunned. Yeah. Like, I see this movie and then I'm like, who is this? This was really good. And I was not expecting much because, you know, today's comedies, they can be hit or miss. Like, yes. sometimes they're really funny or other times it's like they're trying too hard. And they just like, they push the envelope so hard to try to be funny, but it's really not. It's just stupid. So Also, this I hate to say movie this, made me laugh. but Robert mm-hmm. De Niro hasn't done a good movie in... I know. And time. he was so sweet in this movie. And of course, they play up a lot of the Italian stereotypes, sure. but it's amusing. So I love it. Uh, I can't wait the, to see it now. Kim Cattrall is also in it. She plays the mother. And oh, gosh, I'm totally forgetting his love interest, his uh, fiance. Shoot. She, you'll know her. She's it. She's been in a million things. Um Oh, shoot. Anyway, so when I get out of the movie theater, I start looking it up. I'm like, how in the world could I 
miss this. Yeah. <laughs> Leslie Bibb, I believe, is is the is the girl. Leslie Bibb is Oh, in the movie okay. Um I haven't seen her. And I'm like, how in the world lately. could I miss this guy? And one of the things that I absolutely love in learning about him is that he just does the funny stuff. I hear he doesn't get overtly political. I hear he actually took a vow. No one knows where he stands politically. I've like, never heard you know, him mention anything whatsoever about politics. It's and family so much stuff. Of that, it's fun. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so much of that is like what I think comics of today always run towards is just being super political and super shocking and all that. He's He just is – it's the everyday stuff. It's the family stuff, as you mentioned. And so I totally love this film. If you get a chance to see it oh, whenever sure. it comes out uh, until – I'm sure it will come out on streaming at some point soon. Yeah. It's very cute. It's very This is 100% cute. going on our list. I love it. Yeah. That's so, so great. I actually, now that I think about it, I meant to text you because we only get to really catch up like this once a week when we're recording because you're so busy. I meant to text you. There is a show that I want everyone to watch too. It's on, it's on, you know, HBO Max is now just called mm-hmm. Max. I don't want to say Max because it sounds like it's a person that I'm talking about in case people right. haven't <laughs> caught on yet. It's rebranded now. It's just called Max. Anyway, do you know Bridget Everett? She's a comedian no. and an actress. She's mm-hmm. um she's got like blonde shoulder length hair. She's been in if you see her, you're gonna go, I've seen her and stuff. She has a new show that she stars in on Max. It's called Somebody Somewhere. Okay. It is funny, it's sweet, it's a family dynamic. Basically, she grew up on a farm in Kansas mm-hmm. and She, I believe it's Kansas. It's somewhere where they have tornadoes and farmland. So that's my geographical knowledge of (laughs) the Midwest. In the middle. So she has moved away. She had this other life and this, you know, she was pursuing music as a career and everything. And her sister dies. She has one, she has two sisters. The one sister dies. It brings her back home to the family to sort of like reset and um, and it just shows, you know, like what's going on with the family dynamic. She moves back to this really tiny town and she runs into some people that she went to high school with. And, you know, it's a lot of like catching up. But the the group of friends that that all did show choir with her when she was in high school are all still there. And they're. Oh, I would love this. Amazing. They're like. They're in, you know, they're like 40 now and everybody's like got their own little life. She has this gay best friend who just like loved her in high school, but she kind of like didn't really pay that much attention to him. And now they're really close. He's hilarious and sweet. And it's just this like amazing. It's so well written. And it's just this amazing slice of life of what she's gone home to and it is and parts of it are so funny because she is a comedian and she's one of the writers and parts of it are just so sweet and endearing and Mm -hmm. just lovely you know like it's it's amazing it's a fantastic show somebody somewhere and i think it's gonna catch on you know how hacks took a while to catch on totally this is the next hacks totally somebody somewhere good i need something for summer so i'm I'm excited, and I have HBO, and I never use it. It's a it. little bit. It gives me a little bit of Schitt's Creek vibes, uh-huh. like a little because that that there where each episode could literally make you laugh and cry in one episode. Right. It's a little mm-hmm. bit like that. I haven't cried at it. It's nothing like sad, but it's just really, really good. And Bridget Everett is. I've seen her. She was in the Sex and the City movie, the first one. She's been. I mean, you'll see her, and you're 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 going to remember that you've seen her yeah. in other places. Um. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's fantastic. It's such a good show. So I highly recommend it. So I think, and I think, especially, I think you would really love it because it's smart. I'm I'm adding it to my list. Yeah. I keep, I've been going crazy. I actually, this week started watching the A&E biography on the Iron Sheik. So. Oh my God. My husband, Lewis just said, he's like, oh, the Iron Sheik died. He died. And so I thought I have nothing on television. He's the wrestler from the 80s, right? Uh, let me tell you something. Or Not the that 70s? this is anything. I don't know. Uh, 80s? 70s into 80s. Okay. Yeah. Do you know- Who was his big I, rival? Was it Hulk Hogan? Hulk Hogan yeah. was one. He wrestled with Nikolai Volkov in a tag team. <laughs> um, 
But this was during like the the Iran hostage situation in the country and everybody hated Iran. And so they this guy was like trying to be like an all-American guy and that wasn't catching on. And then he decided to go back to his roots because he came from Iran. Oh. He speaks Farsi. I mean, oh, I didn't know it, that. Okay. The, and so he just played up the Iranian angle and he turned into like one of the biggest <laughs> heels, like one of the biggest bad guys ever. And he's got this wife who looks like, I don't even remember what her name is. I, I'll remember when I finished watching it, but she looks like she should be a Carol. Like she's got this like, like bob of blonde hair, whiter than I am. I mean, it's so funny, like this all American woman that he fell in love with and he had three kids. Um, All the wrestlers have a hard life, but I haven't gotten to that part yet. But what was really interesting is that he, to save himself in Iran when he was young, they respected wrestlers. So he became a wrestler. Isn't that so and odd? That's such a Western then became, culture It's such thing. a weird thing. Yeah. But he became a wrestler and then he became a bodyguard for one of like the sheiks or something like that. And one of his closest friends who was like the best wrestler, like the best one of all of them, ends up getting murdered, disappears. And they say, oh, he's just dead. And the Iron Sheik's like, uh, he ain't just dead. They're like knocking him off. And he's like, I better get the heck out of here. Yeah. And so he was able to get a friend of the guy who died, his really close friend, and get to America in order to save himself. So really, Ooh, I need to watch this too. Interesting. Yeah. Those A&E biographies, not that you guys probably like wrestling, but if you do. Oh, Lewis is a huge wrestling good. fan. And so like, I, I, was too I growing like. Up. I like um, the the Andre the Giant documentary. Did you ever see that? Yeah, oh, I, it's on my DVR. Actually, I haven't watched it yet. Oh, that will that will break your heart in yep. in good ways and in sad ways. That is an amazing documentary. He was yep. just what a gentle giant and had, sweet, sweet, sweet. And he had such a hard say. time, you know, just physically because he of of his size. He was huge. Yeah, yeah. But that's a wonderful documentary, and and I think wrestling's fun. Like every once oh in a God, while, we so dive fun. back in, you know, and like we'll watch like a WrestleMania or something. I think it's fun. Yeah. I've never been to one. It's live. a man's. It's a male. At the, when I was watching it as a kid, it was always kind of like. A male dominated, but everybody could enjoy, of course, soap opera. So, like, the girls all had Days of Our Lives and All My Children, and the boys, they didn't realize it, but they were actually hooked into the storylines, yeah. the soapy part of wrestling. It wasn't just about <laughs> the sport or the athleticism, it was always the storyline. Yeah. So, that always, I thought that made it fun. That's cool. I'm going to add that to our list as well because I think, yeah. yeah, I think both of us would like that. Maybe we'll watch that tonight. We don't have anything going it's on. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. All right, cool. Good recommendations. You are getting sleepy. Your CPAP mask is clamped tightly to your face. You will not toss and turn through the whooshing. You will not throw the mask. It's not working, Harold. People who struggle with CPAP have partners who struggle too. Luckily, now there's Inspire. No mask, no hose, just sleep. When I snap my fingers, you will remember to visit InspireSleep.com. Inspire is not for everyone. Talk to your doctor to see if it's right for you and review important safety information at InspireSleep.com. I'm Erica, one-third of the podcast, Books and Betches, a comedy book podcast where we swear, spoil, and we talk about... Whoa, 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 you cannot say that in this. What do you mean? That's like our slogan. It's our gimmick. It is, but just say we're a very funny adult book podcast. How about we just give some examples of things we talk about? Well, there's a lot of chaos. I'm Chris in it with me, I have. Wobble! No. <laughs> We talk about books, but we're not your AP Lit class. I definitely hit on the major points. You did. absolutely did not. She did. You talked Just about- in the order you thought she would. You talked so slowly <laughs> about one thing. <laughs> A lot of sidebar conversations. I just- I hate Are you Europe. denying the existence of chupacabras? You know what, Erica? Yes, I am. <laughs> and we don't always get the facts right. <laughs> Epilogues don't belong in books. <laughs> Call it chapter one. That's a the prologue. The second I see- That's a prologue. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm talking about prologues. <laughs> You can listen to new episodes of the Books and Betches podcast every Tuesday morning, anywhere you get your podcasts. Bye-bye. Speaking of recommendations. <laughs> Very random, by the way, from the Iron Sheik. I know, right? <laughs> to Bridget De Niro, Everett. And now on to Lip Balm. <laughs> Bridget Everett and Iron Sheik. Um, Something for everyone today. Yeah. So let's get to the Lip Balms really quick. Mm -hmm. Um... I know I have one that I constantly go back to, but I want to hear you just tried out a new set. Yeah. So I tell you, I'm a FabFitFun subscriber, and it's always fun when I get my 
um, my box so I can open it up and see what's inside. And I think I added this as an add-on. I don't know if this was part of what the, like the core of the box was, but Tula is a brand that I like. I think I told you a while ago I was using their skin, their face cleanser. Yes. Yes. And you like that a lot. And that's an Instagram and I liked kind it. of brand. That's where I first saw that. Lots of influencers For sure. use Tula. Yep. Yeah. A lot of celebrities, a lot of influencers love it. And so I saw that Tula had this um, set of three, like, I just thought they were lip glosses, to be honest, and I just kind of threw them in. And so when I took them out of my box, I started looking at the product and actually, like, really kind of diving into it. And it's more than just, like, a lip gloss. This is actually called their Lip SOS, Lip Treatment Balm. It's made with probiotics and superfoods. And there's three pretty good sized tubes inside of one box. Now, I looked on their website. They're selling it for $44. I paid less at FabFitFun. And a lot of times, um, if you go to some of those box sites, you can get things at a discount just in their general shop. Mm -hmm. So you may want to do a Google search if you're interested in trying this product out to see if you can get it for cheaper somewhere else. But on the website, it's $44. It's a $54 value, they say, because they give you a break since there's three. Mm -hmm. But these are really moisturizing. They're very glossy and they're the colors are absolutely like gorgeous. There's three different colors in the set. This isn't definite. This is something that you definitely don't want to like put on to go to sleep at night for real moisturizing. But if you want something, especially for summer that looks very glossy and beautiful. And what's neat is as the glossiness fades, the color actually stays like in a wash on your lips. So it lasts, I think, a little bit longer than your average lip gloss gloss or balm. And from what they promise you, it's supposed to actually be really good for your lips. It's supposed to put probiotics and the superfoods back in to give you lasting moisturized lips. And I do feel like it does that. But it's got three colors in the kit. And I'll hold them up for you, Victoria. There's like a- oh, pretty. A Blackberry, a blush, and um, I think they call one strawberry lemonade. It's a very light pink. The light pink you would probably love because I know you're a light pink girl. Mm -hmm. The medium pink is absolutely beautiful and just a great everyday color. It's kind of a true nude pink. But surprisingly, the blackberry velvet is my jam. Like I am loving it. It looks purple yeah, it does. when they do the swatch. But on the lips, when it shears out, it is like the perfect, um, I'd say, raspberry slash blackberry. Oh, cool. And it's a really beautiful, bright, but not too bright color um, that finishes as it goes away. As the um, as the gloss goes away, it leaves you with this just really beautiful stain. And if you're looking for a color that's just a little bit more than just kind of the the pinks, mm -hmm. this is a really nice place to go. And I feel like it would be flattering on almost anybody. This is not like a red where I think yeah, red is kind tough. of hard to wear. Yeah. This would be a way to wear a brighter color that's not shocking and over the top. I love it. Yeah. So did They've you got, feel like, does it go when you're, what do they call it? What's the, the slip? Does it have good slip? That's like a lip yes. term, right? That I've learned. Like, so it goes on smoothly. It doesn't feel sticky like a gloss. It does can. not feel sticky. It looks glossy, but it doesn't feel sticky. Um, it's very moisturizing. What's the um, applicator? Is it like a lip gloss kind it's of a tube? Little, it's a tip. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a tip. It's like okay. a little tip. So you squeeze it and then just put it on with the tip. And what I do is I actually put it on um, I put it on my bottom lip and just kind of press my lips together. Mm -hmm. And that seems to kind of spread out the color the way I want it to. I might just touch the the bow of my lip just to make sure it goes all the way up. But it's they're really beautiful and they feel great and they fade to a really pretty color. And I love that. It's like getting two yeah. products in one, which, you know, we love. And I love the fact that you get three colors in there. Um, their results, they talk about on their website that 100% of the people that have used them say so their lips are uh, softer and smoother, that their lips feel moisturized and more nourished. And I believe it. It's supposed to uh, soften and smooth. It provides antioxidant protection and it leaves behind that sheer color, even though it's a, you know, the sheer tint fades to the sheer color. Love that. That's great. Yeah. Um, it's and a it's good a one. good tip too, because when uh, on going to to look around for the cheaper price, because I used to be a member of the Allure Beauty Box. Right. And so all of the products that you get in your monthly subscription, 
if you want to buy, you know, like the full size of it, sometimes there were full size products, but most of the time they're sample size. And so if mm-hmm. you want to buy something, the full t- you know, the full size of it, you go onto the Allure site and there's like a code or I forget how it worked, but you basically get a discount when you buy right. something that you originally got in the box. I would assume mm-hmm. FabFitFun probably has something. the same thing. Yeah, similar. Yeah. And they have a bunch of add-on products. And I believe certain times of the year you can go into the add-on with or without the membership. And that's where I think I found these mm-hmm. that I added on to uh, to my box. And yeah, you get a discount. But you're right. You With all those subscription services, many times they'll have an opportunity for people just to go on those sites to purchase from them. Yeah. So well, that's how they I keep getting the out. free samples. If they get exactly. customers to actually click through the links and buy to them. To buy the yeah. Buy the product. Yeah. Yep. So that's how that works. So the one, the, the one, the best lip, it, it, I actually should call it a treatment because it's, it might be even a little too much if like your lips are normally moisturized and you're fine. I tend to get like, I go through phases of just really dry lips where like my yeah. lips will just sort of like peel, you know, and mm-hmm. I'll find myself like kind of chewing on my lip, which is bad. Um, and so I've tried like Burt's Bees, which is fine. I don't like anything that's a jelly. I'm not a jelly yeah. fan. And I mm-hmm. will not refuse. I will never stick my finger in a jar of anything. And I don't oh, care. you're not a finger swiper, huh? blessed by little baby Jesus himself, <laughs> I am not sticking my finger in a jar and then rubbing something on my lip. Because yep. stuff gets under your nails. It's disgusting. Like, Oh, I, yeah. It can be pretty I gross. Just, I hate that. Like the, the Here's jar Here's what you do. Stuff. You just don't think about it. You're it's just... gross. Like I just, I won't do it. So- I have very like specific uh, requirements for my lip mm-hmm. balms. And I finally found one a couple years ago and I go back to it all the time. And like your Tula brand, they do now have uh, tints, you know, different tints. It's not like a full wash of color, but a little right. bit of color. And it's a mm-hmm. brand called Kosas. It's K-O-S-A-S. I've it's, seen that brand. It's at Sephora. Um, it's called Kosas and it's sport. It's a little mm-hmm. white balm. So it kind of goes, it, it goes on like a chapstick. You know, I like a little bit of a waxy consistency. It's yep. a little, I would say it's thinner and smoother than a cha- than a traditional chapstick, but it's along those lines. It's on a stick. You know, you, you don't have to touch anything. It's mm-hmm. sanitary. It's not gross. The best <laughs> thing about it is that it has a lot of hyaluronic acid in it. So uh-huh. it exfoliates your great. your lips. And I'm telling you, like, I've had lips where, like, my lips have been bad, where, like, I've got, like, peeling and scaling. Like, you can see it. And with mm-hmm. one application, that's gone. Oh, that's awesome. You And the nice thing is, because it's a thicker consistency, yeah, it stays on your lips. So you can go so, to and sleep there- with it. You said there's a color involved or do they so have So I use the one that's called Baseline, which is just clear. Okay. And then they do have other, you know, like a light pink and then a medium pink. And they probably even have more colors now. I've just never really gone down that road because I've been so happy with the clear one. But um, yeah. it is so fantastic and it lasts a long time. And as soon as you put it on, you feel like a little bit of a tingle. And it's just, it is the most healing thing. I've done lip masks, you know, those where it looks like the big, you know, like clown lips. That you oh, yeah, put, the big lips. Yeah, all that. That does nothing. No, Save it your money. Doesn't. It does nothing. I always wonder about sheet Good masks. Good for the grand. I don't know. Sheet I masks. Guess so. yeah, yeah, you know. it's. I know. Anything that's going to stay on your face for that limited amount of time, unless you have one of the sheet masks that you really can massage the product in that after. That leaves product behind, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the uh, the K-Beauty, I have some of those... Um, some of those masks that are amazing. It leaves a serum mm-hmm. behind and you just massage that in and go to sleep. And that's really great. But this, this lip treatment is just phenomenal. And it's, I, I, I just, I keep going back to it. And every time I run out, I always remember, I'm like, Oh God, I got to get back to Sephora and buy another one. But there, it is the best. So if you need an actual exfoliating type treatment, I would definitely say that's the way to go. We've talked before about like the lip scrubs and brushing your lips with your toothbrush yeah. and things like that. That can be pretty abrasive, but this just manages to do the same thing and it just takes off that layer of dead skin and you don't have to wipe it off. There's none of, you know, there's no, nothing like that. Mm-hmm. You just apply it like a regular lip balm and go about your life and you'll notice like within, you know, one or two applications, your lips are like completely reset. It's amazing. See, I love that we're doing this right now, and I want to try that product because I think, especially as summer 
starts to come around. A lot of people want to lighten up their lip routine. Yeah. And you're also in the sun. Mm-hmm. You're at the beach. That dries the your water. lips out. So sun, much of that is drying. Yeah. And you don't want a really heavy look. You don't want no. to have a really lot, you know, all that stuff. So yeah. these are two really good products that you can try that are going to give you a splash of color. Yep. And, you know, you'll see you'll see if it softens things up and, and takes descales you. Like it does. Like we say in the coffee world. <laughs> right. It descales your lips. It's true. That's it. Because if your lips are really like gross and scaly, you you know, I think people tend to go right to something more abrasive and you don't have to. The The hyaluronic acid alone will just give you like that gentle chemical exfoliation. And it's just and it has like no weird flavor and it doesn't have a weird scent to it. It's just you, you really put it on and just sort of forget about it. It's nice. Yeah, just solid. Yeah, huh. absolutely. Kosas. Kosas. All right, I'm going to have to check it out. And what color do you use? The medium or the light pink or clear? I use the clear. I've never tried the, the colors. Clear? Yeah, but I actually should probably try the colors. But I, yeah, I usually just stick to it's called baseline. So I just stick to mm-hmm. that one. Oh, yeah, that's right. Baseline. Yeah. It. That's what it. It, but that's always good too, even if you have a lip pencil or something that you could, you probably could put it over that, right? And it still moisturize you. Probably. Absolutely. I mean, you may not get all of the benefits. Yeah. But, but you know, there's no gross finger in the jar. I just ugh, I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> no swiping. No ugh. swiping. No, no swiping. It's just, ugh, I can't handle it. It's just too much. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Beauty Pop. Um, follow Jen at Jennifer Horn Radio on Instagram. You can follow me at On Air Victoria. Send us an email at Beauty Pop pod at gmail.com and of course follow us our page on instagram is uh beauty pop pod as well we've got some really fun stuff on youtube and we have a youtube page you can hit subscribe to so you won't miss anything and um that's also if you just search beauty pop podcast it comes right up so thank you guys so much and next week jen's gonna give us a follow-up to our wine mm-hmm. episode that we did last week and so she's gonna try the snooky wine she has an update on the cameron <laughs> diaz wine and um, before then, you have to try the Post Malone Rosé. You have to. I got to find it. I haven't been able to find it yet. So I'll make it my mission this week to see if I can find it. Yes. Your mission is to drink more. <laughs> it's really, I mean, it, this is a hard job. It is. I actually Someone to, has to I'm do it. I'm drinking wine for the, our job, right? It's our work. All, you're doing it for the art. You're doing it I'm for doing the it art. for the people. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you guys so much. And we'll talk to you next week. <laughs>